Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Developing Reading Comprehension. We are delighted that you could spend a little time with us this afternoon. And Miss Tracy Atkins is going to be the one presenting for us today. I'm going to give her control of the screen at the moment. Miss Tracy has been uh, working with us with our new elementary program that we've just recently developed and launched called Young Citizens. And uh, we're, we're just very excited about what Young Citizens has to offer for our K-3 students. And uh, we will be launching our fifth grade version of that uh, probably in the month of July. And we're just excited to have Tracy with us. She's done a lot of work with the DOK questioning. Uh, don't remember, Tracy, did you work with the written material or with our digital material? I worked with, um, I believe it's with the workbook. So not, okay. not the digital. Gotcha. Fantastic. Well, Tracy, we're delighted to have you with us again. And so I'm going to turn the uh, session over to you and mute myself. And uh, we are looking forward to see what you have to share with us today. And I think you may have muted yourself, Tracy. Okay. Myself. Let's see what I did. Um, You're good. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you there for a moment. You're good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start then. Um, my name is Tracy Atkins. I am a third grade teacher at Horizon Elementary in Madison, Alabama. My experience um, spans from teaching pre K kindergarten, um, teaching Title One and fifth grade and sixth grade. Yes. Miss Tracy? Can you hear me? Uh, I wasn't Yes, can you hear me, hear me, Pam? I wasn't hearing you for a little bit. It was very, uh, I don't know really even how to say it. It wasn't static, but it was like you were going in and out. Uh, hmm. Do you by any chance have a headset on? I do not. No. Okay. Now, sometimes a headset can interfere with that, so no problem. Okay, okay, let's give it, because I'm hearing you great now. Okay. Let's give it another try. Okay, I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Tracy Atkins. I am currently a third grade teacher at Horizon Elementary in Madison, Alabama. My experience with um, education is teaching pre-K, teaching ESL, teaching kindergarten, teaching second grade, teaching Title I, and primarily focusing on fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. I would say my love is um, kindergarten and second. I'm currently teaching third grade, and it is a class that I have um, looped up with from last year. So I have all my sweet little babies from second grade, and I am now getting to see the world of third grade. And so that has been most interesting and um, very eye-opening for me, um, being that I did not really realize, even though I've been teaching for 19 years, what all a third grader needed to know. So this has been a great um, learning year for me. But today what I'm going to talk to you about is reading comprehension strategies. And um, we all know that there are many, many, many different ones. And Reading comprehension is simply understanding what you have read. And many times kids do not know why they have to read a book. I come across this more so, I would say, in second grade and below than I have this year. I really feel like I'm getting to see my students and take what we've learned in second grade and really, really, really put it into practice and be able to understand it. But um, We've got to teach them, this is why you're reading this book. We spend a lot of time teaching that, and um, we have to make our students understand reading is not just barking out the words. It is knowing what those words mean. Reading Rockets defines reading comprehension as the reason for reading. If readers can read the words but do not understand or connect to what they are reading, then they are not really reading. Good readers are both purposeful and active and have the skills to absorb what they read. 
analyze it, make sense of it, and make it their own. In that um, quote from Reading Rockets, I really love the word purposeful being used because that's what we're teaching. Those of you in the classroom, that's what we're teaching. Active, we all know that our little babies need to know how to be an active reader. We know that we're teaching them skills to absorb what they read. We know that we're teaching them how to analyze it, how to make sense of it, how to make it their own. Now, when I think of great practices to help a child with comprehension, I think of vocabulary, book choice, reading out loud, tracking devices, checking for understanding, close reading, visualizing, and practice. So in the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to walk through with you these eight strategies that I consistently use with my third graders inside my classroom. And the first thing I mentioned was vocabulary. So we all know that vocabulary is extremely important. Vocabulary instruction is the knowledge of words and word meanings. Stephen Stahl defines it like this. Vocabulary knowledge is knowledge. The knowledge of a word not only implies a definition, but also implies how that word fits into the world. In order for a student to comprehend what they are reading, they must be taught the vocabulary. According to Michael Graves, there are four components of an effective vocabulary program. Number one is wide or extensive independent reading to expand knowledge. So this is what we're doing and encouraging all of the time in our classroom, independent reading. We're modeling reading out loud to our student and then we're trying to teach them how to be an independent reader. Number two is Instruction is specific word to enhance comprehension of text containing those words. Number three, Michael Graves says, instruction in independent word learning strategies. And number four, the fourth component of an effective vocabulary program is word consciousness and word play activities to motivate and enhance learning. I think we can all say, those of us that are inside the classroom on a daily basis, that these are things that we're trying consistently to use with our children. Now, the easiest way for me to teach vocabulary is while I am reading out loud to my students. While I'm reading a story, if when I've pre-read that story, then I will have some words specifically in mind that I know that I want to talk to them about, and I will model questioning a word as I am reading it. I'll act like I am them, and I'll begin reading, and then I'll stop at a word, and I will teach them to stop, reread the words around it, as well as the sentence before and after it, and then we will talk through the process of, hmm, how am I going to figure out what this word means? What do I have in front of me right now that can help me do that? I will also go over new vocabulary words with my students before we read. So sometimes I have all of these words already ready. I have them on cards or I have them up on my smart board and I will introduce the word, give an example of the word in a sentence, repeat the word in a sentence, find a visual for the word, and we will sometimes then try to make up a motion to go with the word. So I do think it's really important to teach our students how to use context clues. If you teach below third grade, then you are doing that all of the time. And I'm very thankful for that because third graders are truly putting that into practice. You'll see on the screen some other things that I um, gave you some ideas of for teaching vocabulary and helping your students be stronger comprehenders. And um, you'll see illustrate the word. You know, sometimes there's words that are great to illustrate. Sometimes there are words that are not. You kind of have to use your own um, thinking brain with that. Um, vocabulary charades, a vocabulary hunt, semantic maps, I spy, a sorting hat where you put different words inside the hat and um, you pull those out and you 
as a class, talk about those words and um, talk about their meaning. Word pairs, the Freyer model, which is what I have on the screen, and I think we all know that. Um, my students can fold a piece of paper in fours, and we can go immediately into this way of um, taking apart a word to understand it and high five the word. Sometimes there might just be specific words that you're wanting to work on for the week. You know, take a hand, a cut out, a die cut hand, or cut out a hand, put it by your door, put that word on there. And when a student high fives it, they have to tell a sentence to someone that has that word in it. And that those are great ways to just kind of really try to get your students thinking about that vocabulary. The next thing I think of when I'm thinking of um, reading comprehension is choosing good fit books. Now, when I was in third grade, I remember being chosen to go to the computer lab for extra help with reading. Now, my little third grade brain was very baffled by this. I had absolutely no idea why this happened. I was a great reader. I remember thinking, I read the most books in the first grade and I had the longest caterpillar with all of those books on there. And I thought to myself, how could I need reading help? I was too scared to ask the teacher, even though I loved my teacher, but there is so much to this story that was wrong. I was never told why I had to go to a computer lab and listen to stories to be read to me but now that I'm a teacher, I know why I was chosen to go to that computer lab. I was not practicing or putting to practice my reading comprehension. And I had no earthly idea how to pick a good fit book. So I feel that if I had been taught before third grade how to choose a good fit book, I would have excelled in my reading comprehension and I maybe would not have been in that situation of being pulled to go to a lab and not understand it. So choosing a good fit book, I tell my kids, it's just like choosing shoes. Do they fit? Do I like them? At the beginning of the year, I love to do this little activity with my kids where we just take all of our shoes off we put them in the middle of our listening rug and then we close our eyes and we go and we grab two shoes. And most of the time we do not have both of our shoes and we do not have shoes that fit. And we like to have our own shoes that fit us. So it's very important to be able to teach our kids how to pick a good fit book. When a child knows the how and the why to choosing good fit books, they are going to take so much ownership of their reading. They are going to know which books to pick. They're going to be able to pick up a book and know strategies to say, oh, yep, this is a good fit. No, this is not a good fit. Your students are going to be empowered when they know how to pick a good fit book which is going to make their reading comprehension soar. So I do use the daily five in my classroom and that's where I have um, in the, gosh, I don't know how many years ago, got the idea of using the shoes and picking good fit books. And I will tell you that still in third grade with kids that I had last year, I still have to give some daily reminders, some just weekly and some not so often, um, reminders of is that a good fit is that a book that you can look through and when you're on the first page are you knowing almost all of those words so it's still things that I have to talk about but I'm noticing that they do not need my help as much as they needed last year um, when they're in kindergarten I know they need a lot of help and so you know you're modeling this on a daily basis another thing I do with my own students is I give them a bookmark like every single nine weeks with their reading level on there. And so here at our school that I'm currently at, we do AR. So our library is coded by AR reading level. And so they just know from their bookmark what is a good fit book for them. Now, the other thing is I'm also teaching them how to just take a book that is not marked with AR reading levels and how to pick a good fit book. So um, another great thing to do with your students is let them have independent book baskets. 
give them a basket that at the very beginning of the year and then let them keep books in there that are just a good fit for them. That could be that you let them check them out of your library at the beginning of each week or the end of each week. It could be that um, you're helping students put the books inside that book bin or book basket so that they have at least, I, I mean, I like for my students to have at least five books at a time that are a good fit for them. Now, this does not mean that I will not tell them at times that they can try a book that is a little bit maybe um, harder for them. I will let them try that. But I also talk with them about, now, when you are reading that book, are you fully understanding everything that you read? And when I start talking to them like that, then usually they can tell me, yes, I am, or no, I am not. You'll see here on the screen just another little thing that um, I like to use with my students, and that's just teaching them how to use their hand to find a good fit book. And when um, you're doing this, again, you are teaching students to take ownership over what they are reading. You're helping them be successful at something that they have to do every single day. So um, they could make their own hand and have these five number have these numbers on there and have these phrases on there. They could keep it as a bookmark. You could just have it up in your classroom on an anchor chart. But that's a great tool for your students to have. The next strategy that I feel like is extremely important and in the elementary classroom, we model this on a consistent basis, and that is read out loud. Read to the whole class. Read to individual students. Teach students to buddy read. Teach students how to read like a teacher. So a lot of times in my classroom, well, really on a weekly basis in my classroom, we um, buddy read a story. And I always like to pick one student that I buddy read with. And when we're doing this, we have lots of talks um, before we buddy read. We go over an anchor chart that we have been using since second grade, since I had these kids last year. And we talk about the proper way to read with their buddy. But we also, I explain to the students that we are practicing reading like a teacher because my students love to hear me read to them. They love when I use expression. They love when I um, can make a story fun. And so I tell them that our goal is to be able to make our buddy really love to hear us reading and that we're all practicing just making that smoothness, you know, making, making our reading more fluent. And um, this is something that they look forward to. In fact, on Thursdays is when we do this, and they are very upset if we have something that gets in the way of us having our read out loud time. I also encourage my parents, read out loud to your child. I tell my kids, if you don't have anyone to read out loud to, read to a stuffed animal, read to your dog, read to your cats. Um, I feel like it's really important also to teach our students that um, they can read things other than fiction in second grade. I know when I taught kindergarten, it seems like I read a lot of fiction. And second grade really kind of got me out of my box, and I started reading a lot more nonfiction. And I found that, that my kids really, really love it. They love knowing that something is real and that they can really take that and learn something from it. So I encourage you to read out loud nonfiction books more than once a week. Point out what is happening in the pictures. As you're doing that, point out and read the captions, teaching your students to that there's meaning inside those captions. Teach them to think aloud. Show them, model that. As you come across something that you think that they might not know, say, hmm, I wonder what this is. I wonder why. This was put inside this book. I wonder what this chart can tell me. I wonder what this graph is for. When you do those things, you're just giving them power to be able to do that on their own. Tracking devices are another very important tool that we can use to help with reading comprehension. You see this sweet little boy here, and um, he's, a, he's a great reader, fantastic reader. I many times, though, have to encourage him to read. And so you'll see him with um, the Halloween finger that he's wearing. 
on his finger there, and he loves to read with this. So tracking devices can help a student with their comprehension. It helps keep them in one place. It helps them not lose where they're at. Um, it keeps them focused. It kind of helps them zone in on what they're reading. And um, you can also use pointers. There's little mini pointers that you can buy at dollar, the Dollar Tree. You can use funny glasses. Sometimes at the teacher table, we put on, um, they were sunglasses, but I've kind of taken the lenses out of them and they're just kind of bright colored glasses, but we put on our special glasses. They love that. Bookmarks. My students love bookmarks. I try to give them one with every holiday, major holiday. I laminate it. They love their bookmarks and teach them how to use that to track where they're at. Markers. I don't know why, but my students like to just take a colored marker from my teacher table and um, use that as a tracking device. To them, it's special, so I, I just let them do that. But those are ideas, things that you can use to um, help your student with their comprehension by teaching them how to track what they're reading. Another great thing that you can do is check for understanding. This is another way to um, enhance your student's reading comprehension. You are just teaching your students how to ask questions. How to ask who, what, when, where, why, and how. So in my classroom, the questions that I mainly model to them and teach them is who was in the story? Where and when did the story take place? And then we talk about, this is called setting. What was the sequence of events? And third graders are really understanding the sequence of events. And so that's something that I've been using a lot this year. And sometimes it's just, was there a sequence of events? What was it? How was the problem solved? And what's the theme or what's the main idea? So these are all things that you can use to help model reading comprehension inside your classroom. The next thing I'm showing you is closed reading. And closed reading is another great way to model um, reading comprehension within your classroom. You will see on the screen that there are the steps there that I use inside my classroom to model um, close reading and there was another webinar that I did previously on close reading so I will not go into all of the um, specifics on close reading but basically you're just teaching your students how to take something that they've read and read it closely so they are taking a first look at something they're taking a second look at something and they're taking a third look at something now, this is something that I've had to teach because students do not just naturally want to read something three times. And this is also usually something that I have, um, well, not, ha I have pre-planned this out for my students. And then it's usually text either just excerpted from something that you're reading or a, a smaller type text that's not too much for them to read at one time. So as I'm teaching this, though, I'm telling my students, this is something that you need to use to be a great reader because we don't want to just read something and have no earthly idea of what we're reading. We want to be able to specifically take something and say, OK, what did I just read? OK, let's go a little bit deeper. What else did I find out from what I just read? So the first reading, you're determining what the text says. The second reading, you're figuring out how the text works. And on the third reading, you're analyzing and comparing the text. Another thing that I believe is powerful in teaching reading comprehension is visualizing. So you'll see there an anchor chart that I use inside my classroom. And that, to me, is just teaching students how to make what they're reading into a movie inside their brain. So, you know, I'm asking them, what do you see? I'm reading to them and maybe saying, close your eyes, listen to the words, and then I want you to just keep your eyes closed and I want you to tell me what you see. 
I tell my students that they should be able to see the characters and imagine what they look like. They should be able to imagine what they are doing. They should be able to see where they are. They should have it playing like a movie inside of their brain. Some great books for teaching visualizing are um, Fireflies by Julie Brinklow, White Snow, Bright Snow by Alvin Treselt, and Al Moon by Jane Yolen. So those are some great books that you could just take, use them to teach that concept of visualizing to your students. The next strategy that I believe is extremely important with reading comprehension is practice. And this is what we as teachers are doing all of the time. You need to think of ways to get students reading more and more. So that might be reading in the classroom, reading with a buddy, reading with a fluffy friend. Even my third graders still love, I have little, um, these little stuffed animals, beanie babies, and they love when I say you can get a fluffy friend and read to your fluffy friend. Be a guest reader. Have someone come into your room and be a guest reader or let your students be empowered to go read to another classroom. Since I have third graders, my students are very encouraged to read when they get to go read out loud to a kindergarten classroom. And I have a little one right now that um, he's in third grade, but he's on uh, about a mid first grade reading level and he is so excited and he's been practicing diligently reading out loud a book because he's going to get to go read to his kindergarten class and so he is feeling empowered and he comprehends that book that he has been practicing and practicing let your students read in unusual places I let my kids read under the table I let them get on top of the tables and read. I have a countertop that's by a window. They love to lay on that countertop and read. Um, let them go outside and read. Something I like to do with my kids at home is I tell them, and I've sent out an email with this before, is let your kids read in the bathtub tonight without water in it, but let them read in the bath in the bathtub. Another thing my class loves is Flashlight Friday. About every other Friday, we have about um, 30 minutes that we specifically use for Flashlight Friday. That is the quietest time in my classroom all week long when we do that. It is amazing how quiet the kids are just because the room is dark <laughs> and they have a flashlight. And they are practicing that reading. They are focused, they are zoned in, and they are learning how to comprehend what they are reading. Now here you'll see some resources that um, I think are very important for you um, to kind of deepen your skills and your students' skills at reading comprehension. I will not read um, the whole list to you, but um, Reading for Meaning, I have that book, but I have not really been able to dive deep into it. So that's my challenge to myself this summer so that I can help my students understand in a deeper way what they are reading. That's a book when I um, am researching different things about reading. That's a book that I, I hear a lot and um, has been recommended by many. And so that's a book that I'm really um, excited about digging deeper into and then taking those strategies and using them inside my classroom. Reading Rockets is a great website to browse and um, find all different types of um, strategies really on that website and they give definitions they tell you all different kinds of things about just deepening a student's understanding of reading that's a website that I even recommend to my parents a lot of times if they're not understanding something that we're doing in the classroom um, then that's a website that I recommend to them I know with my students when I had them in second grade their parents did not understand what fluency was well, we do dibbles here at our school, so I need my parents to understand what that is. And so Reading Rockets really defines that in a great way. And so that's um, something that I actually give out to my parents in second grade that um, is in, you know, paper form so that they can understand what reading fluency is and the importance of it. Teaching blogs, 
another great place to go and find strategies for reading comprehension. Comprehension. Pinterest, another great way to find activities and ideas for reading comprehension. Here you'll see um, just some other ideas of things that you could um, do for teaching reading comprehension. You know, have a current event discussion. Depending on what grade you teach, let your students read something that's happening right now. You would be amazed at um, how excited they get about, about things that are happening in the world and how they are starting to form those little opinions about what's happening. And then put facts in their hand about that current event. Let them do some research about it so that they can be knowledgeable of it. Timelines, that's a great way to um, teach comprehension. Have a timeline up. Let your students um, put things on that timeline that's meaningful to them. Maybe, maybe it's specific books. It could be a wide array of things that you would put on there, but you're helping them understand what's happening. You're helping them understand that, you know, we have past, present, we have future. You're just helping them understand a lot of things there. Take student request. Maybe your students have some things that they're interested in and they want to research. Um, this year I have a little girl who she was very interested in um, researching animals. She didn't know which ones, but she wanted to research a lot of different animals. So she had a request about that. I let her um, research some ABC books and then she created her own ABC book that was specifically um, geared to animals. She had to find facts about that. And when, when she created that book, I knew that she fully comprehended what she had gone out and researched because her facts were spot on. Kidapede is a great place to look and um, that's history for kids, the history place. And another great thing for deepening comprehension is biography projects. My second graders last year loved doing biographies. In fact, they wanted to do, once I taught that to them, they wanted to do that all of the time. They wanted to find people, research them, find out great things about them, and um, put that knowledge that they had to use. And so that's in third grade. My students still like it. I know our first graders here, they do big biography projects. So that's a great way to also really enhance that reading comprehension. So that is the end of my session. I hope you were able to um, get some great ideas and um, be able to take those back into the classroom. I hope you're encouraged to just do more of what you're already probably doing inside the classroom and teach that to your kids. Let them know why they're doing it. Let them know that they are being empowered to understand what they're reading so that they can just grow more and more and more. So um, I just encourage you to do that with your kids. So thank you. Tracy, Miss Tracy, thank you so much.